You got to be disappointed, right? I mean, uh, you know, we talked a couple weeks ago that you thought maybe you get the first shot. That's why you came back. And now this just about has to officially end the whole thing, doesn't it? Yeah, but I'm not surprised. And and I kind of got over being disappointed about the potential for that fight a long time ago. So I wasn't surprised. I knew knew a huge stumbling block uh, for the UFC and and Fedor to work things out was going to be the co-promotion aspect that that M1 is looking for with, with, uh, you know, they have Fedor tied up to a contract for many fights and, uh, you know, he's going to be loyal to them and that. So, uh, I, I wasn't terribly surprised by the outcome and, 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 you know, that Fedor went to strike force. So let, let me ask you real, real quick, Dave. I'm sorry to cut Go you ahead. off. In the end, does it really come down to money or not? Because it, mm. how would they, I'm not sure that whatever the, the offer was, if it was six fights and $30 million, if that's valid or not, if that's an upside, if that's not taking into account what the minimum was, but, I don't understand how they expect him and the company to make more money with Strike Force if they don't have pay per view anytime soon. It just seems like, a, from a revenue stream standpoint, that they did give us something up. Yeah, I don't think it's about money for them. I think it's about continuing to promote and build their brand of M1 Global, and obviously, uh, you know, that to attach that to the UFC helps them tremendously. Uh, and uh, you know, that's not something the UFC is willing to do, and I think that's the biggest issue. It wasn't about the numbers that were on the table as far as the contract was concerned. It, it was about that one sole point. And obviously, uh, Scott Coker has, has done some co-promotions with, with uh, Elite XC and others in the past, so he didn't have a real issue with uh, with doing a co-promotion, especially if he gets a quality fighter like Fedor on the card. I, do you think? What do you think Fedor's take on it is? Because it, it sounds to me, Randy, like it's the management team controlling things. If fighters want to fight the best opponents. I can't imagine... That Fedor doesn't want to get in there with you and, and some yeah, else as well. well I, I don't, unfortunately, it's not that simple. Yeah. I'm sure if it was just up to Fedor and he was calling all the shots, you know, the, the fight would have happened a long time ago. But that's not really the case. Uh, you wonder. I mean, you, you find yourself questioning. Well, how much does he really know? What's he being told by his representatives of the situation, of the kind of money he was being offered by the UFC, and and uh, you know, ultimately. You know, <laughs> you'd think he, he had some say in that situation, but, but again, I, you know, I think he has a contract with those guys that are, that are from his country, and it's a brand that he has a vested interest in, so he's going to stick with them. Just curious, um, from a fan perspective, if you can, you know, I know you can, maybe you can only give the fighter perspective, but from a fan perspective, do you think it's a correct conclusion uh, that his legacy is going to be tarnished in the minds of a lot of fans because he, he just didn't face the best guys in their prime. And, you know, here was an opportunity to do so. So, I, personally, I think it's going to hurt his legacy. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I get asked the legacy questions all the time, and, and, and I, you know, I think he's fought a lot of top guys already in pride, and, and you know, he fought two pretty dang good guys in the affliction events uh, in our last game, Sylvia. So... Uh, as far as his legacy, I mean, I know as a fighter, I think he wants to fight the, the best guys and, and uh, find a way to make that happen. But, you know, there's, there's business decisions and other things that play into that. And, you know, he's, he's doing the best that he can. Stephen Davey, ESPN Radio 1100 here on this Wednesday. Whack him Wednesday. Randy Couture, of course, a local. He's part of the uh, Sports Legends Challenge. Uh, we'll give the details on that again before we get out of here. And we're talking about UFC 101 and the uh, news of Fedor signing. Last thing on. On Fedor, um, in in any way, do you think the UFC could have budged, or from what you hear, where the demand's just ridiculous and the co promotion thing was the big stumbling block? Is there is there part of you that says, you know what, maybe UFC could have done a little more in this case? Uh, I don't think there were a whole lot of other issues that were a problem. It, it boiled down to the the willingness of the UFC to take their brand and, and hitch it to another promotion to 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 do a co promotion and. That's just not something they're willing to do. I mean, you know, well, if you, if you ran the company, because you're saying they're not willing to do it, if you ran the company, it, would that be a wise decision? Uh, considering their place in, in the market, certainly in the U.S. market, I think they're probably making the right move. 